Hello and welcome to the Indiana Secondary Transition Resource Center Capacity Building Institute's session on uh, transition services and activities. I am Mike Nevins with the Indiana Secondary Transition Resource Center and um, our pres presenter for today is Melena Nygaard. Melena is a graduate research assistant with the Center on Community Living and Careers. She has a background in special education and is currently pursuing her doctorate in school psychology. She values school as a resource for children to have access to fully comprehensive services. Later on in, in today's uh, presentation, we'll also have Wendy Ritz and Kathleen Hardy Hansen from the Center on Community Living and Careers. And now here is Melena. Hello, like Mike said, my name is Melina, and today we will be talking about transition services and activities. So as many of you may know, the Indiana Transition Requirements Checklist poses this question. Are there transition um, services and activities that, um, in the transition IEP that focus on improving academic and functional achievement of the student to facilitate their movement from school to post-school? Well, by the end of this presentation, our learning outcome is that you will be able to answer yes for every IEP that you write or individualized education plan. Today, our agenda will include reviewing and answering some questions I believe we might have and a think pair share activity that you can take home to your school districts and implement with the special educators in your district to kind of build consensus amongst each other on how to write um, compliant and quality transition services and activities. And finally, we will review. So first, beginning with a review and answering some questions. Today, we will answer these three questions. What are transition services? How are transition assessments, post-secondary goals, and services and activities all related? And how can I write compliant transition services that will help my student? Come with me as we unpack each of these. So first, each of the slides that has crimson and cream kind of split halfway across the screen will pose the questions. Our first question is, what are transition services? As many of us may know, based on the federal and state law, transition services are a coordinated set of activities within a results-oriented process based on a student's spin. Well, what does all of this mean? Let's break it down. I'm gonna break down each bullet point with further information, a definition, and some non-examples and examples. To begin, a coordinated set of activities. Coordinated, pretty much just means systematic. We want to have uh, transition services that are systematic and that complement each other. As these bullet points say under the definition, um, coordination ensures alignment across the age appropriate transition assessments, the summary of findings and the post-secondary goals. And now for some non-examples and examples. So say a student has the post-secondary goal to obtain a job at a bookstore. And the services say to apply to intern at a hospital and apply to college. Well, this is a non-example because if a student wants to have a job at a bookstore, interning at a hospital and applying to college may not be that coordinated and systematic services that align with that goal. And an example here with the same post-secondary goal to obtain a job at a bookstore would be to research job requirements, um, fill out a job application, and write the resume. Now for the second bullet point on answering that question, what are transition services? Transition, transition services are a results-oriented process. To define that, they facilitate movement from school to post-school activities. And that means that we're focused on that outcome and the result that we want the student to attain or that the student wants to attain after they leave high school. And that could be um, movement from school to post-secondary education, vocational education, integrated employment, 
adult services, independent living, and community participation. And now a non-example would be if the student's post-secondary goal is to obtain a job as a teacher and the services say that the student will apply for a job at a local grocery store to earn money for college, that's actually not focused on the result or that long-term outcome that, we, that the student wants to achieve. If the student wants to become a teacher, um, an example of services and activities that would uh, be focused on the result and that long-term outcome would be to uh, research college teacher prep programs and review disability services at each college or to take the SAT because those services will help the student become a teacher rather than uh, it, it's focused on that long-term outcome rather than the steps to get to that outcome like uh, working in a grocery store to earn money. And the final bullet point to answer that question about what are transition services, I mentioned SPIN. Some of us may have heard of SPIN, and that is the student's strengths, preferences, interests, and needs. So we want to be sure that we're considering the student's strengths, preferences, interests, and needs in everything that we do, especially in our transition IEP and in uh, writing these services and activities. A non-example here would be if the student's post-secondary goal is to receive on-the-job training and the service says research college programs, that doesn't align with the student's preference or interest and need to receive on-the-job training. Researching college programs and on-the-job training don't align and they, they don't honor the student's spin. So an example here, for that same post-secondary goal would be to participate in the school coffee cart to practice receiving on-the-job training. That's an example of a service that would allow the student to gain practice and gain experience that will help them in the future focused on their strengths, preferences, interests, and needs. Spin. Now we're on to our second question. How are transition assessments, the summary of findings, post-secondary goals, and services and activities all related? Each informs the next. They're all related to the student's spin. Let's break that down a little further. Up here, you can see that we have these arrows. And this is really just to show a visual representation that every part of the transition IP should align. Uh, the transition assessments should directly lead to a thorough summary of findings, and that summary of findings should lead to those post-secondary goals. And finally, the transition services and activities are directly based on and aligned with those post-secondary goals. A non-example here um, would be, say, the transition assessments and the summary of findings indicate that the student would like to be a vet. And the post-secondary goal says, um, obtain a job grooming animals at a shelter. And the services and activities indicate that the student will research local animal shelters. So at first glance, this seems great. Everything has to do with animals, right? A vet, grooming animals, etc. Well, I'm looking for quality here. The, if the student would like to be a vet, then the post-secondary goal should directly align and directly relate to those, that summary of findings from the assessments. So if the student would like to be a vet, then the post-secondary goal should say obtain a job as a vet. Because what we can do here is if we think, it, it's not our job to necessarily tell students that they can or cannot achieve their goal, right? We want to help students discover that on their own. And that's something special about transition services and activities is that they can, we can create transition services that will help the student realize that they either need to find a new goal or help them stay with the one they have chosen. So an example here would be that the student could research job requirements to be a vet, research the education requirements, and research jobs working with animals. So then they can kind of come to terms with it themselves and through that exploration and through those services and activities, to, um, to figure out if being a vet is something that they 
would continue to like to do and that is achievable for them. So that's how everything aligns. And our final question that I'm reviewing today is how can I write compliant transition services that will help my student? As I mentioned previously, transition services are a coordinated set of activities within a results-oriented process based on a student's spin. It's also important to remember that transition services take place in the IEP year, support each post-secondary goal, and include school personnel. So that's just a little bit about how you can write compliance services that will also help your student. I'm gonna dive into that a little deeper. Transition services and activities must take place during the IEP year. So that means that the services that you write in the IEP should end by the next IEP. So it's a whole year process of working on these services that will help the student reach those post-secondary goals. And they should support each post-secondary goal area, meaning if there's an independent living post-secondary goal for the student, then there should be transition services that support and help the student achieve that goal for each independent living, employment, and education and training. And the transition services and activities should be supported by school personnel. So that means in the by whom section on the Indiana IEP online platform, there should be um, a school personnel such as the teacher of record, a school counselor, um, people in the school to help and support the student with those services. And transition services and activities help the student in either identifying post-secondary goals, moving toward their identified post-secondary goals, or helping them gather information to potentially change their post-secondary goals. So as I mentioned previously with the vet and the animal grooming example, that's something great about transition services that, that is that they can help the student change their post-secondary goals if, if need be. Now writing transition services and activities. In the description section on IIEP, that's where you identify the activity. For example, completing applications, conducting an occupational interview, or visiting a college. And then in the narrative, that's where you provide a detailed description of, or a detailed narrative of that activity that you have identified. And that includes who is doing what, how the activity and service um, will support the student in achieving their goals. And as a reminder, each service and or activity gets an individual box. School personnel must be involved in all transition services and transition assessments are not transition services. And that is because transition assessments are conducted annually and they are separate from transition services. So we have completed our first task on our agenda today and now we will move into numbers two, three, and four. We will be doing a demonstration of a think, pair, share activity in which Think means we'll practice on our own using a case study. Pair, we will collaborate with a partner. And share, you'll share your ideas with the group. So the activity we are about to um, demonstrate, it is something that you can take back to your school and use with the special educators in your district to ensure that you are um, writing transition services and activities that go through each of those um, questions that I answered previously. But today for um, demonstration's sake, we, I will read the case study to you during THINK, and then during PAIR we will have um, two colleagues demonstrate the thought process that they go through when trying to come up with those transition services that align and are coordinated and results oriented and all of that. And then in SHARE, I will share with you what we have previously come up with as transition services that already do align and meet all of those requirements. So for the THINK, as I meant, these are directions that you can use in your district. We will be uploading this, uh, this section of the PowerPoint so that you can add additional case studies should need be to practice with your district. But these are directions you can use then. 
think for each case study, you will have three minutes to work alone to brainstorm at least three transition services and activities for the student. And to do that, you'll read the summary of findings from the age appropriate transition assessments and the post secondary goals to create a list of transition services and activities that are individualized for that student. For the pair, you will have three minutes to discuss and decide on at least three transition services with your partner and share one person from each group could share out to the whole group. And today we will uh, discuss a transition services and activities checklist that can be used to ensure you are being compliant as well as writing quality services. So here's our first case study. I'm not going to begin this timer, but in the slides that will be uploaded, this is here for um, the timing's sake. So think, let me read the summary of findings. The post-secondary employment summary of findings indicate that Fernando works a part-time job at ABC Employment, and he asked his employer to complete an employer evaluation form on January 20th. His employer reported that Fernando often exhibits great use of time and a positive attitude. The only negative mark toward Fernando was his somewhat frequent tardiness. Fernando remarked that he is often tardy due to his family who drives him from school to his part-time job. Fernando reflected about the evaluation form by stating that he enjoys working but looks forward to playing the clarinet in an orchestra. Based on the employer evaluation form, Fernando is a diligent worker who continues to want to be a clarinetist in an orchestra. Now the summary of findings for the post-secondary education and training. As one of his transition services and activities for this year, Fernando is involved in a music theory class and asked his teacher to complete the career and technical education report on December 4th. Fernando received a score of five, excellent, consistent, for every item on the report. Fernando noted that his high scores on the CTE report encouraged him to follow his dream of pursuing music and clarinet performance in college. Now for the post-secondary independent living skills. Based upon the transition assessment, student and parent interview forms on January 17th, Fernando currently does not need an independent living post-secondary goal. Fernando noted his plan to live in a dorm, continue to manage his debit card, and shop for necessary items. He records that he has all of the skills to live on his own, but may need some assistance navigating transportation as his family drives him to school now. Fernando would like to go on college visits to find the right school for his music aspirations. Fernando's mother agrees that Fernando has the basic skills to live on his own. Now we can see below are those post-secondary goals. For employment, I will obtain a job as a clarinetist in an orchestra. For education and training, I will go to a four-year college university to study music and clarinet performance. And now, I will turn it over to um, Kathleen and Mike to demonstrate a pair conversation. Hi, Mike. Hi. So uh, after hearing some about Fernando, what are some things that you thought? Did anything stand out to you about some services that might be good for him? Yeah. I. I thought of a lot of different things. I was first going through this, the spin and, um, you know, he has lots of good strengths, the use of time, positive attitude, um, and uh, his preferences. He likes to work, he's a good worker, but he um, would prefer to play the clarinet. And um, so that would be his interest and the need, I think the transportation that the only weakness was that he was late to work. Um, and so he needed some good transportation. So I was thinking it's pretty clear cut in terms of uh, long term employment career goal to be yeah. in an orchestra and play the clarinet. Yeah, I thought definitely maybe interviewing somebody in an orchestra might help him to really understand what that takes that it's not just it's a lot of hard work to actually be in orchestra so I yeah someone might be good um i also think um sometimes students kind of think that they're just going to be able to 
play the songs that they like, and maybe it would help him to learn some more difficult songs that he might play in an actual orchestra might be a good service. Yeah. I love that idea, Mike, especially because he's in a music theory class, but I'm not sure that he's currently in the orchestra, um, probably, um, but learning to play some of those uh, songs that maybe might be required in an audition for college, yeah, that would be excellent. And he also said that he definitely yeah. wanted to go to college for that, so I think researching some colleges that offer music programs that are... Um, I'd like to know if he'd like to stay close to home or more. Did I miss that? I might have missed it if it said that. But either which way, he needs to research some colleges that offer music programs would be good for him too. Right. He also said he'd like to go to go visit those colleges. So I think he first researched which one have the programs he's interested in, and then if it's feasible to be able to visit, maybe his family might be able to help him out with that and. Give us the report. Yeah. So we could. I had some students, the only other service I thought might be good for them, I've had students before that worked as an aide for the band director while they were in high school. And if wow. if he could do that, maybe maybe they could set up some activities that would help him with some more music. So being a, an aide, if that's possible, um, might be a good yeah. service for him too. I like, I like that idea. I also was thinking the transportation piece that um, obviously transportation um, has been a struggle uh, with his family to get him to his part-time job. And um, if he's looking toward, you know, even the use of public transportation and um, possibly studying for his driver's license, that might be a good service and activity. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. That was great. A great demonstration of uh, a conversation and really using a student's spin to uh, come up with those services and activities that align with everything. So here would be uh, where you would share out. So one person from each group could share out to the whole group so we could catch a little glimpse into those conversations people had. But since we all participated, I think we can move on a bit. Now the transition services and activities checklist. This is something that I created, just asking some questions so that you could read through them. And if you answer no to any of them for the services and activities that you've come up with, then you make some changes. So I'll go through this checklist once, but I've included it in the remaining slides, just as a reminder that it's a resource you can use and it will be uploaded with this presentation. So the first question is, are the transition services and activities coordinated? So from the ones that Kathleen and Mike mentioned, um, interviewing the, uh, a musician in an orchestra and researching college programs, being a aid for a band or an orchestra, those are coordinated. They all go together and um, so we can answer yes here. And then are the transition services and activities results oriented? What they discussed, they were all focused on that long-term outcome. So yes, do the transition services and activities align with the summary of findings? They really made sure that they, they read that summary of findings and, and created services that help the student with those interests, those, their spin mentioned in the summary of findings. Um, then we have the question, do the transition services and activities align with the post-secondary goals? We can answer yes for that one. Do the transition services and activities align with the student's SPIN? Kathleen, Kathleen even went through each part of SPIN to record the student, every um, aspect of that for the student. Um, so yes there. Do they take place in the IEP year? We didn't mention that, but that's, um, something to consider for compliance and our school personnel included and if an outside agency is included are they invited and the final question on the checklist is is there a transition service activity to support each post-secondary goal so the student had one for employment and one for education and training so we just need services and activities that will support those goals so once again, if the answer is no to any of these questions, then you can make changes to ensure you're writing compliant and quality services. 
Now here's an example of what we have come, we had come up with uh, previously. Uh, the description says college research. And in the narrative, we indicate that Fernando will choose, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Fern, Fernando will, sorry. Fernando will meet with his school counselor and teacher of record to research local colleges and universities that offer a major in music and clarinet performance to align with his post-secondary education and training goal of obtaining a degree in the field of music and clarinet performance. So I think Mike and Kathleen, they both hit on this one. Um, so that's great that we all thought of something similar. And that really shows that there's consensus to be had here between uh, multiple special educators and people writing these IEPs. And in the by whom section, we have the student themselves and we have school personnel. And it's in the to support section, we see that this would support employment and education and training. And another example of a service that we have come up with in the description it says music research for the clarinet. And the narrative we indicate Fernando will choose two lists of required clarinet repertoire for college and learn how to play each piece. He will ask for help from his music teacher as needed. Fernando will check off each piece he has learned to help him determine if he is prepared to audition for college music programs for the clarinet and a career as a clarinetist. This aligns with the post-secondary education and training goal of obtaining a degree in the fields of music and clarinet performance, as well as his employment goal to obtain employment as a clarinetist in an orchestra. And as you can see here in both of these service examples, that last sentence just really shows the alignment from the summary of findings and post-secondary goal to these services. And once again, in the by whom section, we have school personnel and the student. For our next case study, I will go ahead and read this. The post-secondary employment summary of findings say, as one of her transition services and activities this year, Ellie works at the school coffee cart and she created a task analysis of her coffee job on uh, 920. Ellie listed the steps she takes to have a successful day at her job. Many of the steps Ellie listed include the use of her Dynavox. Thus, Ellie noted the importance of finding a job that will permit use of her Dynavox. Ellie also pointed out that her favorite part of the, her job at the coffee cart is when she can place people's orders and get them what they ordered. Based on this task analysis, Ellie needs a job where she can use her Dynavox, and she would prefer to work in the service industry. Now for the post-secondary education and training. As one of her transition services and activities this year, facilitated by family, Ellie observed the Indiana Pacers store clerk throughout the season and completed a job shadow feedback reflection on 1015. While on the job, Ellie noted the main responsibilities of the job aligned with the benefits she gained working at the school coffee cart, taking orders and giving people their desired order. Additionally, Ellie recorded six things, things she liked about the job and only one thing that she liked the least. After this experience, Ellie wants to learn how to work as a store clerk at the Indiana Pacers team store by gaining skills through members in the community and on the job training. Now for post-secondary independent living skills. On the Adolescent Autonomy Checklist, 920, Ellie indicates that she needs ongoing support to conduct independent living skills, such as doing laundry, housekeeping, personal skills, and healthcare skills. Ellie requires a nurse to aid in suctioning her trach tube and feeding her through her G-tube. Ellie enjoys watching Netflix, listening to music, and watching sports games with her family. The employment post-secondary goal states, I will obtain employment in the, in the service industry in a job where I can use my Dynavox, like the Indiana Pacers team store. The education training goal um, indicates I will receive on the job training and the, um, the final goal states, um, I will receive ongoing support from nursing services to help me be as independent as possible in a supported living home. 
Now for the pair portion of this activity, uh, Wendy and I will discuss uh, what goes through our head in uh, creating services and activities for Ellie. I'm Melina, how are you? Good, hi Wendy, how are you? What, what are you thinking? So I felt like this was a really good um, capture of Ellie and her supports that are needed and as well as her strengths. Um, so I noted that she has a job in her own school and, and she definitely takes orders, but then she also had the support of her family to observe um, a job shadow reflection at the Indiana Pacers and it aligned with what she currently likes um, in the service industry. And then um, her interest also included things that um, aligned to that, like watching sports with her family. What do you think? I think so too. Um, I, I enjoyed that uh, there was a lot of detail in this summary of findings. So that'll help us in creating services that uh, align with the student's spin. And I noticed in the uh, post-secondary employment, like you said, she had, works at a coffee job at her school. And I know that her um, education and training goal actually says that she wants to receive on-the-job training. So I was thinking maybe there's a way for her to get on the job training at her coffee job um, to maybe support that post-secondary goal. Um, and then I, um, I was thinking for her independent living skills, uh, maybe she could create a list of sorts of the supports she knows that she needs for those uh, doing laundry, housekeeping, personal skills. So then she can take some of that ownership um, and self-advocacy um, for those, those independent living skills that she does need support with. That's a great idea. Um, and so then it sounds like she's already done a job shadow experience. And um, it sounds like that has continued to um, create her down that same path that she's chosen. Um, we, I like to remember that transition services and activities are supposed to help a student either stay on the path they chose, choose a path, or choose a new path. And so it sounds like Ellie wants to continue down that same path that she has chosen. So I really liked um, that in the um, summary as well. Great. Thank you. Now we can um, move on to where we would share, except we all got to participate in our conversation. And then here we have that checklist once again, that if we wrote down our services that we created in our minds, we could check uh, if, if we met these requirements for compliance and for quality. And here is some examples of what we have come up with. Oops. Okay, in the description, watch videos of the use of the easy stand and transfers to a changing table. In the narrative, this explains that Ellie will watch videos showing the use of the easy stand and the changing table to help her learn how to use them and become more comfortable with their use. This will support her independent living goals. And in the by whom section, we have Ellie and we have school personnel. And this shows that this is to support those independent living skills. Another service we have come up with was community job training with an adult service provider. In the narrative, we explain that Ellie will participate in a one hour job experience three days a week with the support of a job coach from the local adult service provider. This connects to her post-secondary goals and involves support from services she'll be using after high school. So this really shows that bridge of um, helping the student transition from school to, to post-secondary life. And this would support employment and education and training. And in the by whom section, we have the student and school personnel. And a final transition service is um, a basketball team internship. So we noted that uh, part of Ellie's spin was her interest in watching sports and basketball and the Indiana Pacers. So in the narrative, we explain that Ellie will participate in a job internship 
with the local college girls basketball team. Using her Dynavox calculator, two big red buttons, and the support of her job coach, Ellie will keep track of points and rebounds for the team during home basketball games. This will support Ellie's post-secondary goal to work in the service industry using her Dynavox, and this activity aligns with her interest in basketball. So we have just completed our Think, Pair, Share activity, and our final um, aspect of this presentation will be to review what we have learned. Remember that you can use the transition services and activities checklist to ensure that you answer each question with a yes and can um, really write those services that meet all of the requirements. And remember to refer to the student's spin and everything should align. So once again, here's that checklist that you can use. I just wanna make sure that everyone has some strategies that you can really take home to your districts. One being that think, pair, share, Activity to work together and come up with um, services that align and are coordinated and results oriented and all of the above. And then there's also this checklist you can use to ensure that you are including what you need to include in transition services. And as a review, um, that, that um, figure from before I have included here, just because I wanna make sure we hit home that transition assessments directly align to a thorough summary of findings. And that summary of findings directly aligns to those post-secondary goals. And once again, those transition services and activities should directly align to those post-secondary goals. And as a final note, be sure to consider the student's spin, strengths, preferences, interests, and needs, because that's why we're doing what we're doing, right? That's why we are writing this transition IP and why we are coming up with these transition services that align with everything um, for the student. So be sure that we are considering their spin. And if you do have any further questions, um, there's a link to the Center on Community Living and Careers website and a bunch of further resources. If you read the little introduction, there's some directories, um, resources to explore careers, and um, resources to make the connection between each part of the transition IP. Um, there's a transition planning folder, and um, the Indiana transition requirements checklist, so you can know exactly what is being monitored um, from your district, and Thank you so much, and here are my references.